The following is a transcript between Matthias de Stefano, referred to as me, and his higher self, referred to as I am, originally produced on February 4th, 2021, under the constellation of Aquarius, in the mental week, examining through the solar plexus, me. If there is a star that has marked my life the most when looking at the sky, it has been serious. But I think it was like that for everyone on Earth. When I looked at it, I feel like I'm looking at home. It's the only place in heaven that, when I look at it, I feel at home. That's where I come from. I am. Sirius means bright, the star that burns. But it has had many names in history, as it is the brightest star in all of heaven. At just over eight light years from the sun... It is the one of the closest to our solar system, and it is huge. And for this reason, it marks the beginning of the year in many cultures, both in the north and in the south of the world. Me, the heliacal rising of Sirius. I am. Ortho means dawn, and heliacus is related to the sun. During six months of the year, Sirius disappears from one hemisphere to be seen in the other, and the following six months it reappears. The day it does, appearing just before sunrise, was considered the start of the new year. Depending on the latitude in which one is, this beginning of the year will occur on one date or the other. The closest to the equator, the star will appear in mid-July, near the latitude 20 north. It will appear toward the end of July, while the latitude 30 north, it will appear toward the beginning of August, the territory where Egypt is located. For which reason August was the first month of the year, while at the end of July, It is for the Central American cultures. Me, like the Mayans on July 25th. I am, Sirius is the brightest star in the sky, but at the same time the most representative of the constellation of Canis Major. The Great Dog. Of course, human vision has nothing to do with what this star represents. Me, We used to call it popularly in Kim as Denid, the mother star, although others knew it by Enna. Sirius, as much as it looks like a star, is actually two, one small and one large, one called En and the other Na. At first, I thought that the star was very important to me because I remember that it marked our times, the rise of the Nile, because it was the mother Isis in the heavens. But at the same time, it was because not only those who taught us all we knew came from there, except that once I lived there myself, Sirius was my home. There I heard about earth for the first time. There I heard the Trevitz mention the seeding of the worlds. There I felt that I should be a part of what I do today. Sometimes I look at the star with nostalgia, and yet it's not that I miss living there, but rather that nostalgia is produced by remembering that it was there that I recognized my purpose, that I gave meaning to my existence. And today, this year, I would never have thought that I would have lived it according to her since the Syrian helical rising of 2020 was just on my birthday, August 4th, my 33rd birthday. Sirius continues to mark my path. I am, well, it takes you to who you are, to your being. Me, It was around that same time that we received their representatives, the Syrians, the Inna. It all started with the child's dream, a message from the future. His mother, shocked by what the boy told her, tried to reach me to share her message, as I was in the boy's dream. I had begun my regency in Runyala, the capital of Kem, some 12,000 years ago. His dream spoke of what would happen in the next thousand years, and his vision horrified me. 
Therefore, we decided to call a council where the 12 families would meet, but they would also be called our stellar ancestors. It was the second time I saw them in my life and perhaps the penultimate. We waited until it was the moment when they would return, since they took a cycle of certain years to get close to us. We receive you in the river, with the boats ready to take you in front of the guardian of time, the Sphinx, and in front of her we will all meet to make offerings, the vows of words. Thus we met in the great hall convening the meeting that we called Harna Folink, of the sun, the moon, and the star. The inna covered their faces, and they warned us not to look directly in their eyes, because theirs saw all the times, and we were not ready to contemplate it. But I did. I remember looking up at the moment one of them spoke, and then I saw it. I remembered it. I am. That was the key moment that has marked your current life. Me. I know, that's the reason why I remembered what I lived in their worlds, and I remember what was done, and I agreed in that life. They said, time is like a mirror, therefore the question you should always ask yourself is when. They founded everything that we are, human civilization at its peak. They gave architects the plans to build the pyramids. They were the ones who spoke through time with their simple gaze. Sirius was much more than the brightest star. She was the mother of all that we are. She was the mother of the heavens that fertilized life on earth. She gave us a purpose. She taught us about the universe. And she reminded me. I am. She showed you that remembering is not having memory, but connecting the parts of you scattered throughout the cosmos. Me. How do we understand it? I am. The great scientists, artists, philosophers, musicians, writers, producers, do not have ideas. They are the idea. But to become the idea, they must expand beyond what they are, beyond what they know. Open the box. Me. Think outside the box, like protecta to all dimensions. I am. We have explained it, and each particle is actually the vibrational projection of another particle, and therefore they are all reflections of each other which are grouped by harmony. This helps us to understand that the particles are one, scattered throughout the cosmos in millions, and that in the correct vibration, they will align with the others regardless of the distance. Its vibration is like a note, and together they create a melody. It is your music, and you call it memory. Me. This is why we often need music, sounds, songs, mantras to awaken the information from within. I am. Vibration awakens energy, emotion, where everything is recorded, and it becomes action in the body. The memory is not to go back. It is to vibrate in such a way that you connect all the particles of yourself projected in different times and spaces, and your body fills them as present through the senses from the inside out. Me. That's what channeling feels like, remembering yourself in different dimensions. When I expand, I stop being me to be many, to be all that I am. I am. And you know well that you have walked each world consciously and that you are in this one by your own decision and that you know well that it is from Sirius that you feel the great responsibility and they reminded you 12,000 years ago. Me, it's the great weight I carry. I am, and tell me, what is it? Me, when I found out that the virus was consuming worlds, I made a decision that I had to do something about it. 
a few lifetimes later, I was born in one of the Orion systems, and from there I coordinated a sector of the seedings of worlds. Together with so many thousands who did the same from various worlds to as many other planets. Seeding souls from our systems to the ones on this side, like Earth. And today, when I look at many people around me, I feel a great responsibility, which sometimes borders on guilt. Was it I who convinced them to be born here? Is it because of me that they are trapped in this world? Everything that I saw systemic and serious here becomes pure emotion, as if an old man had become a child, starting over with immense knowledge inside, but with the hormones of someone who is growing up. And I felt that maybe it was my fault. And so, looking into the Syrian's eyes, remembering my part in it, I told myself that I could not leave here without helping those who once helped the systems. I am, and they are still in the process of doing it. Me, yes, I know. And for how much more? I am. No one is forced to come here. Everyone has been responsible for their choices. Me. But for a large group of souls, I was the one who pointed to this world and said the word there. And they all followed my finger here. Sometimes I feel responsible beyond the fact that it was a choice. And no matter how many times they remind me of it, I feel a great pain in my soul that it's hard for me to release. And yesterday I relived it remembering the conversations that I have had over and over again with beings from different worlds. I am, tell me, me, in Sirius, in the world that I remember as Gludok, they used to hold these kinds of meetings in which they debated the order and harmony of the galaxy. As a child in this life, I remember a representative of one of the races saying that the Anglushaha, Earth project was emerging as expected and that they were considering opening the doors of direct communication, to which another immediately replied that they would never allow a human to set a foot in the Confederation Hall. His words of them were, a single laugh from a human could kill us all. They spoke of a human as a virus, a bacterium that was better to contain. That scared me. The amount of energy a human generates can throw entire worlds out of harmony based on subtle patterns. They would be a virus in the system. For others, humans were a natural source of energy, as well as other worlds, which took advantage of developing planets until they learned to manage their own power. I witnessed this many times, debates about the evolutionary state of the Earth, whether they were ready to know certain things or not, manage others or not. And one day I decided to be human myself, like many others just like me. I started to fall in love with this world and my energy was linked to it. To her, from her. But the meetings continued. And no matter how much they seemed to get further and further away to dissipate between time and space, they continued to resonate in me, no longer as from alien worlds, but from brotherhoods of light and subtle beings. The particles were more and more subtle and scattered, like when one loses the wave signal of a radio interference. But now connecting every day more, the signal returns and awakens my memory and those that I once was and those that I am in other worlds begin to resonate with me as in more and more people. I am, as happened yesterday, me. I think it had to do with the fact that a new year was born from the I am and what they told me was don't relax, there is still a lot to do. This is the hardest half. Many said that there were things that should not be shared, and humans are still children. They see us as incapable of managing many things, and it is true. 
We are like that. They said that there are many who are doing the same as me, but like me, it is impossible for them to find the right balance. There are still two more 26,000 year cycles left for humans to really reach an adequate level. To us, it seems like a lot, but seen from the galactic time, it is nothing. In ages of solar systems, ours is only 18 years old, and I think this makes us a system in which we are only now beginning to emancipate ourselves, to see what we want to be when we grow up, what are we going to start studying or working. I agree with them, at least with many of them. They talked about the fact that there is still many difficult transition processes and that we continue to cling to hopeful messages because we live by faith and not by facts. We hope for salvation and we do not take the responsibility for our actions. And I took it very personally. I am. It is. Me, yes, I know. I consider that I do what I can in all of my senses, at least the part that touches me. I did not come to save anyone. I came to try to educate, to share, and sometimes I feel that it is not enough. Maybe it is because of that fault, but what they are saying was about how we take things. They told me that from this new moon on February 11th, the preparation for the Great Network test would begin. Every 22nd day of each month from February to August 2021, we should set the intention to activate a specific attribute, sound, light, form, love, wisdom, and will. Closing in the unity being on August 22nd in the blue moon. It reminds me of the meeting in Sirius, the boards, the councils, where we discuss the plan, the steps to follow. And yesterday it reminded me of this. But the seriousness and pressure of some species means that I cannot sustain the feeling of guilt and responsibility in my emotion. I am, you are free, me. Yes, but to where? I am. Listen well. You are free. Me. I am. You are free. Me. I am. The weight you feel has been chosen by you. No one has placed it on you. The weight that each of us carries is a chosen responsibility. The load we drag is the weight of our choice. You owe nothing to anyone. No one depends on you. You are free. That person who feels weight for her family from her is actually free. He who feels responsibility for his work from him is free. The person who blames himself for the mistakes made is free. And those who live by karma are free. Who sees himself fulfilling a mission is free. Who cares for a child feeling that it is the most important thing is free. Do you understand? You are always free. The only thing that weighs you down is your choice about things. You do what you can not because it is within your reach, but because you can. You are free to choose not to, just as you are free when you chose to. But the weight does not fall on you, because all that exists in a memory, a network, and by sharing what you know, you spread this weight, you distribute the pressure. You are no longer alone, neither here nor there, You are remembering. Me. But what they say. Yesterday, some told me that I shouldn't share things that they still didn't know how to manage. Others debate that maybe it was time to throw everything out and to hold ourselves accountable. What place do we occupy in this debate? I am. It is the war to transcend. The war of your creation. Are you ready to face her and remember freedom?
Me. Maybe yes. Maybe I need to release from the pressure from Sirius, the pressure that constitutes what I am today, what we are, what made us build this humanity. And for that, I must go directly to the conflict that started it. I am. Freedom is only achieved by finding order in this chaos that you have created through oblivion. Forgetting is losing the axis, forgetting to be guided by the stars, slipping on firm ground, losing the coherence of the center. Order is what Sirius has given you from the beginning. Order is what you need to get back. And the first disorder originating in the war between the I and the am. Me, the Orion War. I am. It is time to return to the origin and remember why you are here.